What's crack a lack and it's your boy Roche Mode, just in case you did not know. So we're going over quarterbacks. We're redoing the quarterback rankings. A lot has changed. So we'll get into that. But before we do that, go ahead and become a bro and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. It's always much appreciated, much blessed. Helps it helps the video get discovered. Helps moi get discovered, which means hey, I can start devoting more time to the content. And I Listen, you're not going to agree with everything I have here. It, the point of this is discussion. Discussion, discussion, civil discourse. We all got opinions. We all love football. Let's share those opinions. Let's talk football. That's, that's what the point is to these videos. And don't hurt my feelings too bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I got running backs on the way. And then I, uh, I also have... Uh, different uh team off seasons those are pretty fun those really uh hurt feelings <laughs> especially if you're a raiders fan <laughs> man man raiders they, it, gosh that their hate for philip rivers is whoo man it's, it's deep <laughs> well let's go ahead let's talk about quarterbacks a couple guys in this list is bryson perkins from virginia and nathan rourke from ohio but let's start with jacob kip out of northern colorado probably a practice squad a scouts team type of body remember only about 15 16 quarterbacks get drafted if that even as low as 13 so a lot of these few guys they're probably not going to get drafted they're going to be uh, undrafted free agents but this guy, he's got a good arm. He's got a good arm, but I think he's made of glass. So everyone talks about Tua being made of glass. This guy's made of glass. His first three years as a starter, he ended up only playing a combined 10 games over his first three years. What? <laughs> yeah, like I said, made of glass. Mason Fine, a guy I was much higher on at the beginning of the year, and that is just slipped down this list mightily out of north texas not a big quarterback but he has a big arm i was like i said i was high on him at the beginning of the year but after he lost rico bussy jr at receiver he really struggled and he really put on display some bad decision making he forced a lot of throws i don't know if in the part well, i don't know if that was because you know he was trying to impress but it didn't kelly bryant out of missouri uh another guy that He's got a ton of potential. He's got a huge arm. He's got a good touchdown field, but short to immediate throws doesn't seem to. He doesn't really have a zip on those. They kind of like loft, kind of. They kind of float. But um, like I said, he's got a pretty good arm. He hasn't really played any significant snaps under center. He's played like back going back to Clemson. He was part of a big read option type game. Uh, again, undrafted free agent, probably. Shea Patterson out of Michigan. He's going to interview well. He interviewed well, matter of fact, at the Senior Bowl. And he should do the same at the Combine if he gets an invite. But still, the guy's been super inconsistent. Uh, he holds onto the ball for way too long. And he's got a borderline NFL arm. Steve Montez out of Colorado coming here next. Uh, big arm. He, he literally looks like he. this guy looks like a prototypical type of quarterback with size and arm strength. But huge, huge accuracy concerns. I mean, and, and just he's bad at dealing with pressure, which is something you don't like to see. And it really showed at the senior bowl. Like some of his made a lot of questionable decisions especially in the game and like i said man for a guy with a huge arm he's just very inaccurate and then kevin davidson coming in here out of princeton this is a guy i really like i thought he would looked really good at the east west shrine game he's only a one-year starter he's coming out of an ivy league school so he's already got those things coming against him but like i said he looked good at the east shrine practices he's got great size he's got a huge arm and guess what he's actually been working with uh phil and matt sims uh or at least um, he was training with them in preparation for the West Shrine game. So a little interesting tidbit there. James Morgan out of Florida International. Guy that honestly, he could climb the, this board a little bit more. I had him up there uh, on my board. I had him a little higher on my board earlier. I kind of reeled back on that a little bit. But he really has improved his stock, much like Davidson, with that East-West Shrine game practices and, and well, game but um his arm is huge 
He's been very careful with the football, very protective over his two years as a starter. But again, you know, you got the lack of competition and it's not like he exactly blew up at Florida International. Tyler Huntley coming here at 13 out of Utah. You'll see some scouts refer to Huntley as impatient, which really surprised me because I think it was more on his offensive line. We all know Utah's offensive line was pretty garbage. They were garbo. And he wasn't really given a lot of time to throw. So I think um, I think he would anticipate pass rush even if it wasn't there. So, and, I th- and again, that's reflective on the offensive line. You kind of see that with Derek uh, Derek Carr. So, you got his performance. He looked very comfortable at the East-West Shrine game, which was very encouraging. But you could see when given the time, he takes a bit too long to make decisions. You know, uh, you know, I like the arm strength. He's got really good deep ball accuracy. And he's a playmaker with his legs. So, this is another guy that could be a real steal. Josh Love coming out of San san jose state oh man i love i love i love san jose state's logo it just looks so cool now this guy he in my opinion this guy is the gardner Minshew of the draft he, he doesn't have a great arm talent kind of a noodle of an arm but he's a very good decision maker and he was good at handling pressure um given it was against wasn't against the best competition but another guy really to look at i think could be um a steal in this draft Jake Ludden out of Oregon State. He's got good size. He's good at reading defenses. He's probably higher on a few other people's lists, but where he struggles is going through his progressions. Really, um, it's like he's only seeing one side of the field. It's kind of remember in Madden when they had the they included QB awareness. It was like the cone, or like it was like this big. It's kind of like that. He, he only sees one side of the field. Doesn't really. He doesn't. You know, you got a quarterback. You got to be constantly looking. He doesn't do that. So that, again, it's just something I noticed. He's a good decision maker inside the pocket. He is an ideal pocket passer. But uh, like I said, does have a limited arm talent. On to the top 10 here. We're going to start with Nate Stanley, a guy I was higher on at the beginning of the year. And then I got really low on him uh, after the season concluded. And now I'm, I think I'm kind of falling into a nice space where... I'm content with where he's at in the list. Uh, He really does have, like, he does have a high ceiling, but he just isn't a game changer. At least he wasn't at Iowa. He comes from a pro style offense, so that's a, that's a plus, right? And he'll have some big games, like just look at the bowl game against USC. But for the most part, he had a hard time moving the offense. Like everyone gives Jake Fromm, like they knock Jake Fromm for not being able to jumpstart his offense, being just a game manager. Imagine that, but times 10 when it comes to Nate Stanley. This guy, he thrives in structure and he can't survive out of it. He misses easy throws time and time again. But like I said, arm talent is there. That's why I got him on this uh, at number 10. And you know what? If anything, I think he's going to be a really good backup in the NFL. Cole McDonald here at Hawaii. He's an interesting prospect to evaluate just because of how gimmicky that Hawaii offense is. He has a huge arm. No downfield accuracy to speak of. This guy, I think he was... Uh, some some of his passes looks like he was purposely thrown to defenders. I mean, at, at two points this year, he was benched. So, kind of alarming. But, but honestly, his accuracy underneath, it's kind of top-notch. Like, on the point. I, I like his arm strength. If he could come, become a better decision maker, he can develop into a quality starter someday. But like I said, huge project here. Next, we got Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma. The dude's an enigma. The dude's an enigma. Um, There's a lot of people that are very high on Jalen Hurts. I'm just not one of those guys. I like his arm strength. He's he's pretty responsible with the ball, like game manager-esque. He he makes good decisions. And I think he'll do well in a backup role. Simply, he isn't accurate. He's not an accurate quarterback. And we saw that during the Senior Bowl practices. People like to point to, well, look at during the season. He had like his completion percentage was just under 70% uh, at Oklahoma. But that's look, you got to look at context when it comes to that. And a majority of his passes were either screens or they were like deep balls thrown to 
guys that were wide open. Oklahoma receivers were in the top five for yards of separation this past season. So he's basically thrown to guys that were already wide open. A lot of people want to point out, well, maybe if he's put in an offense that's like Lamar Jackson that was like centered around him, Taylor made for him. He is not the athlete Lamar Jackson is. By no means, by no stretch of the imagination. I think Lamar Jackson was a far better, far better prospect coming out. Far better. And and listen, I'm not trying to take away anything from what, what Hurts has accomplished. I'm just saying... As a prospect, there are some pretty big holes there. And those need to be taken into consideration. Some people want to say, oh, he's a first rounder. Oh, he's a day day two type of guy. Honestly, I would be even hesitant at the end of the third round to use him or to spend a pick on Jalen Hurts. That doesn't mean he can't develop into a quality quarterback. I'm just saying with what we're given right now, I'd feel better maybe on day three. And then let's talk about Anthony Gordon out of Washington State. By no means is this guy Gardner Minshew. Don't you dare. How dare you disgrace Uncle Rico. Doesn't mean he's bad though. It doesn't. Uh, he was probably the best looking quarterback at the Senior Bowl. Not named Justin Herbert. He's got a decent arm strength. Uh, but he's... He, like I said, it's it, his arm strength won't, won't like... Oh, it won't amaze you. But it's good enough, you know? He's very accurate. Um, his decision-making, eh, it could be better. Uh, and that's why I, I don't think he's comparable to Gardner Minshew. I think Gardner Minshew is a great decision-maker. Uh, he often fails to see linebackers dropping back into into the middle of the field. You kind of saw that in the Utah game. Uh, you kind of saw that, actually, just this past Super Bowl. Or this past, just this week with the Super Bowl where... Um, Patrick Mahomes, he didn't even check down on the linebacker. and It was an easy pick. It almost looked like he was throwing to the linebacker. It's kind of like Anthony Gordon. He constantly makes those mistakes. If it's not man-to-man, if, they're dry, if those linebackers are dropping in zone, he has trouble. And, I mean, I just again, his poor play against good defenses like Utah, like Washington. But there is there's some stuff to like about him that, you know, you think he can develop. Now, this starts where I think all these guys are day one or first rounders or day two prospects. Jacob Eason. He checks all those prototypical quarterback boxes. Size. The boy's got an arm. And but I mean his, his play under pressure is abysmal. It's abysmal. I mean he does does it's not like he has good mobility. So he can't run from pressure. He, and by and I'm not just saying you know he's not like a, a, a scrambling quarterback. I mean even his movement in the pocket, it doesn't really, it it's not great. And best believe when he he's gonna face a lot more smaller pockets in the NFL. He's gonna see a lot more pressure in the NFL. This guy, you need to develop this guy. I think he could have used one more year there at Washington. And you got to keep in mind he was doing this behind one of the better if not one of the best offensive lines in college football. Like I said, I'd love to see if, or I would have loved him if he stayed another year. Next, I got Jordan Love out of Utah State. I really want, I really wanted Love to stay another year and just transfer, because he was a grad transfer. He could start immediately, go somewhere like Oklahoma or Texas Tech with his old quarterback. I thought that would have been really good. It would have really helped him showcase his talents with better playmakers. He didn't, he came out. Dude has all the arm talent in the world and i know a lot of people or a lot of things were working against him in 2019 like i said no he his coach moved on um he lost like i think it was like nine starters uh, or eight or nine starters on the offense so again a lot working against him but i think I think there were more concerns with love than people really want to point out. And I mean, I don't think you can just blame it on all the circumstances of the tooth of his 2019 season. I hate people trying to, I hate the Patrick Mahomes comp. I don't know where people are getting that from. It's not accurate. It's not. It, it is to me. It's ridiculous. When you sit down and you really look at it, I found he was more comparable to like a Jameis Winston, a Marcus Mariota. His accuracy, decision making in 2019, it wasn't great. This season, you saw a little bit of that 
also in 2018 um also a comparison people make well they were like there people would be like well josh allen in his final season in wyoming uh wyoming could be a comparison but allen he he didn't put the ball in harm's way as much as love did this year i don't know if love knew he he was going straight to the nfl that he wasn't gonna transfer um so he forced a lot of passes but I don't know, but like I said, all the physical intangibles are there. This is a guy that teams would love to develop. I don't think he's a first rounder. I'm just gonna say that he's a good prospect, just not a first rounder. Jake Fromm coming in here at number four. A lot of people like to knock on Fromm just because he doesn't have elite tools like your Tua, like your Herbert, like your Burrow. I mean, no one compares to Burrow. Burrow's a monster. I love Burrow. Cold-blooded killer. Um, but, I mean, and you know what? You could also include Jordan Love in there. He, his his uh, Fromm's tools pale in comparison to what Love can offer. But through and through, he is a good quarterback. You can expect him to run your offense and to take care of the ball. What more can you ask from a quarterback? Is he a game manager? Yes, he's a game manager. So was Alex Smith. And you know what? He did well. I'm just gonna say that. Is he a first rounder? Uh, you can make an argument for it. I feel more comfortable maybe in the second round taking a guy like Fromm. Next, I have Tua Tangovaloa. I have Herbert jumping him. And it's, you know what? It simply came down to, and we need to know how he checks out medically. He's phenomenal. He's very accurate, especially downfield. His ball placement could be a little better, but I still like the decision-making. Majority of his passing yards, yes, they came after the catch, but I think that's more reflective of uh, the all the playmakers Alabama had and how Saban chose to use them. So I don't think that's a knock or an indictment on uh, Tua's ability. He's a great quarterback. If you go back to that LSU game, it was Tua leading that comeback. He's simply a really good, if not great, quarterback. Now, big red flags, of course. It's the hip. We'll find out, I think, next month. Oh, it might be this month. We'll find out soon how that checks out. Will he get a clean bill of health? But he does have an extensive uh, injury, like history. And I mean, none of them were too severe till the hip. But really, honestly, until we... Given how, the, until we know how the hip checks out, his abundance of injuries. I mean, he had his two year, uh, two seasons as a, I mean, starter. It, it, yeah, they were filled with those type of concerns. I kind of said, well, you could also take into consideration all the red flags Frank Gore had coming in, the medical red flags he had going into his, um, going into the 2005 draft, I think is when he came out. And he ended up having the most longevity of any running back in that class and a couple classes after that. So, I mean, yes, those that you need to weigh that. But at the same time, you don't want to miss on a really great prospect. So it's a tough decision with Tua. But I couldn't put him over Herbert just because of the health right now. Justin Herbert, though, coming here at number two. Everybody and their mom knew Herbert was going to look good. He was going to look great at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, I knew he was going to thrive in a controlled environment like that. We know the arm talent. I think he was pretty limited because of Oregon's offense. Um, typically, they're really uh, their offense is basically dedicated to screen plays, short routes. Um, he had the big concern with him. He has been a Houdini at times, um, especially in some of Oregon's biggest games. He has a few big games though on tape, so don't knock that. Look at the first half of the Auburn game, the Washington game. So he does have some big, uh, big game. Uh, he's, he, he has appeared in some of those bigger games, but then look at Utah, where they totally decided not to even utilize Herbert. They just mainly focused on the run and getting pressure on the quarterback. But I mean, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt at this point, just because of the arm talent. So he probably will be a top 10 pick. And then Joe Burrow, of course, he's coming here at number one. He's calculated. I just said it. He was a cold-blooded killer. No one was more accurate downfield. He enjoyed one of the best seasons in college football history. I I just I don't think he's a one-year wonder. We saw glimpses of that potential in 2018, but it really wasn't there. He really couldn't shine until Joe Brady came and stepped in. I mean, 
Burrow. He's the top pick. He's the best player in, or at least he's the best player. Or he's gonna be the he's gonna be a number one if uh, when I put out a big board. Just because, guess what? The quarterback position is a little more valuable than a pass rusher position. I'm sorry, Chase Young. You're great. I love you. But that's it for the video. Go ahead and do the YouTube thing. It's always much appreciated, much obliged. And like I said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.